everyone, and welcome to the kitchen. Uh, <laughs> anyways, what we're basically going to do is um, we're going to talk about our junior's experience together and sort of how it was being a junior. And we wrote um, a book for you guys today. Yes, we <laughs> we we got some questions from current juniors of. Uh, certain things of like how it was like and and um, stuff, you know, f preparing for the future and that sort of thing and uh, all that. And uh, also, if you're new to West Coast and didn't realize that we were in juniors before, um, yeah, we were in juniors for a long time. I think we did what five routines Ever together since yesterday. <laughs> Yeah, I want to say I want to say five five routines, but it feels like it's been a lifetime. Yeah. Honestly, like we did basically all of our juniors together. Yeah. Uh, all of our younger adult, young adult routines were together. So yeah. from I think it was uh, 2009 to 2013 slash oh, 14 yeah. slash 14. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Because so. that was when we took our juniors routine and did it in classic. At mm -hmm. Liberty, mm -hmm. right, right, right around your birthday. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that was scary. <laughs> it was, but basically, that's that's more or less where we were at. We were kind of that generation um, coming into it, and uh, yeah, mm -hmm. we more or less just kind of want to just get into the questions because we think that they were really, really awesome questions. Yeah, we we were talking about it just a little bit. Um, the main points that we wanted to talk about actually were the questions from a lot of the juniors that uh, we received. So we thought that it would be a perfect way to just kind of open up the conversation. Um, mm -hmm. And plus just hearing our experience from it, hopefully you guys will be able to relate to it um, or just kind of learn and, and know that you're not alone in your own experiences. Uh, the questions that we received were actually... They were fantastic, um, very, very thought provoking. And even for us, like we were like, oh, actually, we have to think about this a little bit because yeah. it's something that we hadn't thought of before. So, uh, so yeah, so enjoy the show. Hey. hey. <laughs> First question up is uh, How do you get taken seriously? Okay. And we're going to mix this one together with um, finding your voice or also turning this into your career. So we can kind of. Yeah. Collaborate everything together and yeah. Yeah. So. so so how do you get taken seriously? That's I think probably was our biggest hurdle when mm -hmm. when we both became not juniors anymore in the community and we're really trying to push and make this a career. So that's why we sort of lumped it together. Is it's just like when you're teaching classes, having people take you seriously and even when you are, you know, being professional and you know saying all of the right things people just just still don't take you seriously just because of your age in comparison mm -hmm. to theirs and that's something that i think still sort of goes on and um sure at the, even yeah. for me at this point like I'm, I'm 23 now but even even to this day i think people still kind of see me as a junior just because they saw us grow up they yeah. they they've known us since we were babies and so in their minds, we're still kind of babies. And so even now to this day, we'll, we'll kind of get the hecklers in those classes and stuff. I think as long as you kind of expect it, then you can always find a way to jump through those hurdles. Um, that was how it was for us. We had our mentors um, basically guiding us through all of our classes when we were younger. Mm -hmm. We started teaching at what, 15? 15 oh. years old? Oh, I think, yeah, I, was, I think it was 17. So no, 16 or 17 for you yeah 16 or 17 and then like 15 for me yeah and i actually have a i have a picture of us in our first workshop ever oh really yeah i do well i have to share that later but oh, that's awesome. um it was at like ronda diamonds and oh, yeah. i remember um before we went to go teach that i remember buddy was saying just be aware you may have some hecklers mm -hmm. you may have people trying to kind of prove you wrong but just stand in your truth and stand in your own strength and just trust the process. It will happen as long as you expect that it's going to happen. You can rely on each other. And if you're a single teacher that's yeah. going through this, um, just trust in your ability and and trust in yourself to like kind of carry you through the class. It's really hard to do, but I mean, I mean, you have more to say on that, like yeah, I, I mean, just just a little bit. Um... It's, it's, it's just kind of like you have to take the high road when it comes to the hecklers as well. Mm -hmm. And that's just like when you're trying to be taken seriously, if 
you sort of like act out against someone who is effectively trying to like undermine your authority kind of thing. Because like when you're teaching the class, like you are the person that is commanding the room, that sort of thing. And someone's trying to like, you know, test your knowledge basically if you just sort of stand your ground, like how Nicole is saying is like, like know that what you are saying is true to you and, and you think that it'll help everyone in that room and you handle the person that is, you know, trying to, I don't know, I don't know what their motivation would be, but they're, they're just, you know, doing something that can affect, affect your information. Booking. I think that has something to do with the fact that if you have this person there and you just, you have more confidence than they expect you to have. I think the real reason why these people are trying to heckle you is because they may be jealous or they may feel intimidated by the fact that they're being taught by someone that's younger than them. And that was a big thing for us. Mm -hmm. And people were vocal about that when we would teach them in classes. Um, the biggest thing that we had to do was just stay confident. And, yeah. and ha kind of it, as hard as it sounds, we had to make it look like it didn't bother us and we'd be like, okay, no problem. Like, this is how we're going to go about it. Mm -hmm. and, or like, you've been taken under consideration. I'd appreciate it if you no longer speak. <laughs> 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 but those are the kinds of things that we would have to do. And it's not just because, you know, oh, like we're juniors, we can't do that. No, it's still your class. Right. If you need to, if someone's being so rude to the point that you need to take control, like I remember, and I will never forget this, we had to kick somebody out of our workshop. Do you remember oh, that? Where was it? That was in Switzerland. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. It was, so it, it was. Never forget. Yeah, it was, it was, a, it was an unfortunate situation where. They were questioning what we were teaching mm. because of the person that taught us, right? They were questioning like, well, this person that you took from doesn't believe in this. And we had to sort of showcase that this is what we were teaching and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And then they ended up keep persisting. And then we sort of just kind of pushed them aside and no longer took questions from them. Yeah. Yeah. So. They, they. It almost felt as if like they, they hired us because they wanted us to be cheaper, but teach the exact same things that our teachers would teach us. Right. And I think they were shocked to know that we had our own form of knowledge or like our own belief system. And that's okay. You know, as, as teachers, it's, it's your knowledge that these people should be after. And so don't ever think that you need to be like your mentors exactly like them. Um, because, you know, you have your own set of knowledge, you have your own backgrounds that's different than what your mentors have gone through and you should showcase that. Yeah, I want to, I want to talk a little bit more about that, about getting taken seriously because that another thing, and I don't know if it was that the same way with you, but mm -hmm. when I was growing up in the community, I was three years old or I was three years old, but I didn't do competitions until I was five and Essentially, I, my sister and I, we were homeschooled all throughout our lives. We didn't have any friends that were our age. All of our friends were in their like 50s. They were maybe 20s. Like they were all double digits and we were single digits. And I remember as a kid growing up in the community, I wanted to be taken seriously so badly to the point that I tried to act like an adult so much that I would never speak because I was, I was afraid that what I would say sounded too immature. I was afraid of like the way that I was dressing was too kid like or like I never I never allowed myself to experience the kid life. Mm. And as hard as as it is in the community, you have to it still embrace that side of you because you are like if you are still a kid, seriously, be a kid because I I cannot tell you guys enough how much I feel like my childhood was kind of robbed because I was always worried. And it didn't really matter because even in my 20s, people still kind of view me as a kid. So, and now at this age, I'm like, I don't care. Like if I want to kind of like act like this, like I'm, I'm going yeah. to, this is, it's, it's my personality. You know, it's myself that I want to take care of and not so much what other people think. So I don't know if you had anything like that too. Yeah, I think that like, especially now like, people know me as a very goofy person and i met this guy this. <laughs> please tell the story 
When I first met Chris, we were at the studio. I was, I remember I was coming out of the back room. It was at the very old dance studio and he was dancing in a mosh pit with all the other dancers from the studio. And they're like, go, go, go. And they're like yelling at him to go. And I didn't even know who he was. I had never seen him before. And I just kind of like squeezed to like the very front of the mosh pit. And he's doing his hip hop moves, and he's got a Transformers mask on of Optimus. Wait, Optimus Prime. Oh my god! It was funny. I think I knew right then and there that we were going to be partners. Yeah, it was pretty. <laughs> it was, it was perfect. So, so to that point, <laughs> like people know me as a like goofy person. Mm-hmm. You have to like effectively set expectations for yourself of like mm-hmm. you know, okay for. You know, I'm going to go to the pool and act a fool kind of thing and just be that kid. And then when I go in and I want to be like be a competitor, there's like certain things of like in a Jack and Jill that have like how I should act. Like I shouldn't like be, you know, disrupting the entire line when we're all lining up. Right. right? I should. Like, that's stuff that, you know, I feel like is just a courteous thing when it comes to mm-hmm. the other competitors. Because some people might be nervous or they might be just, like, so in it and they just need quiet. Like, there's there's all different ways in how people handle nerves. So, I feel like that's just kind of a respect thing of, yeah. of where, you know, maybe sure. act less like a kid, right? Mm-hmm. It's just kind of like just be a little bit more respectful to the fellow people around you there. But, you know, when you go to the pool party, you can be that kid kind of situation and the thing is too is like when i was dancing and and social dancing with my friends like that's also where i was just like i'm just gonna screw around or when i would get them in competition like i would just want to dance with my friends Mm -hmm. uh you know and and have that situation and then my dancing evolved with just time and 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 how much i goofed off and how much i didn't and that's just my personal been my personal preference since then yeah for sure um i think with that uh the more you start to lean into yourself that's how you're going to be able to find your voice right Mm. so it was a long and complicated journey for all of us to kind of find our voice and even to this day like i don't know about most of the people out there but for me at least Mm. i still feel like i'm still trying to find my voice you know, and I feel like people may say, oh, no, like you, you've got a style. There's there's you know, that's a, a very specific thing about you. But I'm still in my own personal experience. I'm still trying to find that. Um, so don't ever stop looking for it because it's going to constantly be changing. And if you look at, you know, um, the top champions or if you look at people that you really look up to in this community, they if you look at them like five, ten years ago, they look completely different than they do today. The, true. The, the difference is, is that they're dancing in their truth and they're acting in their truth. And that's probably the biggest bit of advice that I would want to give to you guys. Keep acting in your truth and do what you feel is good for you. Because I'll tell you guys, there was a time where I was dancing like this. <laughs> and I was like, I love my style. It wasn't the best, but um, (laughs) at least I was happy, you know, and that is the difference. And like, you know, you you grow, you evolve later, but that's how you find your voice is you find what you really like in your dancing and you want to keep that and just keep going towards those things that make you happy. And if you go to a workshop and you're like, I love what this teacher just said, I'm going to start working on that. And then you apply that to to your style then little by little, your bubble just starts to grow bigger and bigger. And that's kind of the goal with that. Um, Yeah. like Yeah. And and sort of on the flip side of that. So like, so like what I feel like you're talking about is, is, is kind of like your, your dance voice a little bit in that sense. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like, if, if we were to take that question, sort of um, talk about just like kind of voices in like place in the community, it's like, What do you find that, like, do you really like teaching? Do you really like performing? Do you like competing? Do you like Mm -hmm. community building? Do you like DJing, right? Do you like emceeing? You know, do you enjoy that, (laughs) right? Do you enjoy trying to do, like, command a room or that sort of thing? Like, 
I would say just try those things. Try what what you want to do. And if you want that to be your voice, then work towards that. Make steps towards that. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you want to be a really, really good routine competitor, dancer, and in the, like, Jack and Jill's and Strictly's and routines and stuff, then you can put your focus to that to try and make your voice be heard in those mediums. But if you want to be, like, a DJ or an MC or a community builder then pour your heart into those avenues so that way that becomes your voice. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think that that also is is applicable to another question that we have on this list is like who to, who to have as your coach or um, finding a proper mentor, I should say. Yeah. Because for, for, for us, that voice is having someone to look up to and modeling yourself after these people. We have countless mentors and like we've had people guiding us along the way, even mm -hmm. if they weren't professionals in the community, we've had things that we really appreciated about these certain individuals that we would take from and then apply it to our own personal um, journey. And those are the kinds of things that you need to find for yourself. You need to find, okay, I really like that this professional is really good at managing their classes, really good at carrying their bodies and using their voice when they teach and they do it solo, which is really hard to do. So I'm going to model my teaching after this specific particular person. But then I really like the way this person does routines and the, the presence that they have that on the floor. Like having different individuals and kind of collaborating all of that and making a conglomerate of mentors and modeling yourself after that, it's not a bad thing. It's not like you're copycatting. You're just inspired and you're, you're, you're finding a way to build your own self. And it will be, it always will be different. So um, I think that that's a good way to find a coach as well. Like that was yeah. kind of, that was another question that we had. Um, find what you're after, find what, what works for you. And if it doesn't work for you for a while, that's okay. You're in, you're in the experimental space. Don't think that you need to find your voice now. Don't think you need to find your, your career or find anything right now. Yeah. You're in a space of discovery. And I think like, I don't know if it was this way for you too, but I put a lot of pressure on myself when mm -hmm. I was 15. Like when we had just started teaching, I was like, okay, this is what we got to do. And we were already, we were traveling to, to Europe and we were doing yeah. tours like for a month at a time. And I remember like, I was like in it, but I wasn't because I didn't want to be away from home for a whole month. You know, like it was like those kinds of things where I was like, okay, but this is what I got to do because it's expected of me, but it wasn't what I... I really wanted, you know, now the times are different, but again, that might change, you know? So how, as I was like years ago as a kid, I didn't want that. Now mm -hmm. I do, but right. you got to listen to you, you know? Yeah. So, and, and I think, I think within that too is you need to find a coach. So that listens to you, um, and can adapt yes. with you. So effectively, like, I mean, we've uh, like my all of my choreography from day one has had some sort of benji influence from the get-go mm -hmm. and i've i've heard from from others as well that he's he's really good at trying to push you to and and mold you to you and that's what i've definitely felt in like my most recent routines where it's it's been less um, cause I think in, in juniors, let me backtrack this. Like I mm. think in juniors, like when you're first starting out, it's very much like, okay, do this, try this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then as you know, experience sort of builds up with doing more and more routines, it's kind of like, try this. And instead mm -hmm. of, and, and it's like, oh, maybe what about this? I really liked what you did there. And that's what the coach is saying. Yeah. Right. So it's, yes. it becomes more of a collaboration and if you can find someone that can really adapt and push you and see sort of ideas and sort of have that bounce back and forth. And this is, of course, like strictly within routine. Um, but it's also very similar to like if you have a community mentor that you're like, hey, I want to be a, like lead a community and like maybe try and create a community of juniors in that sort of situation. 
you're like, okay, what if we try this type of event? And then that, uh, uh, you know, person that is mentoring you is like, Ooh, I like that. Like maybe mm-hmm. I tried this. What if, what if we did this and added this little bit? It becomes yeah. this conversation versus this like, do this, do that right. situation. And also building off of that, make sure they know what you want. Right. Yeah. So if you know that you want something specific, um, like for us, we wanted to make sure that we can choreograph our own routines in the future when we were dancing together. And we wanted to make sure that we could teach, mm-hmm. you know, we had very specific goals that we, we that we had. Um, and so when we were brought to our coaches, when we, when, for example, we started with Benji, Yeah. you know, like I, I started with Buddy, you started with Buddy. And then when we, when we came together, we started with Benji and he knew exactly what we were going after for our future. And so not only was he, not only was he our coach in routines, but he was also our mentor in our other aspects that we wanted to go after. Mm -hmm. Um, And just make sure that they are aware of that because a lot of the times what may happen, not saying that it will, but what may happen is they'll just give you a routine, not thinking that you, you want more out of it. So what he did with us, and this is my favorite, is that he said, here's your skeleton, you know, like for, I think it was our last routine together in 2013. Yeah. Yeah. It was our last routine together and it was more of a collaboration because it was our last year in um young adult the not the next year but the year afterwards it would have been classic yeah and he knew that and he knew that we wanted to start becoming adults in our partnership so because he because we had had a long partnership as well mm-hmm. it's not for a new partnership right like oh it's, it's like, like you've this. been dancing for six months and then try this yeah it, it you want to build some rapport with each other first before you try and build a routine together because then that can end in butting heads a little bit (laughs) but um that's how you get to know your partner right Mm -hmm. is building that rapport first and then he gave us our skeleton and we had to put sounds weird we had to put like the meat and the hair and like you know fingernails and eyelashes (laughs) okay let me let me put it a different way he gave us the base of the cake (laughs) and then we put the icing and the sprinkles and the candles and and the sparkles no okay so (laughs) Right. You, you guys know what we mean is, is that's that's something that could benefit our partnership, benefit the yeah. relationship and benefit our future. And when you have a coach that knows what your future is, they can kind of help build that for you and guide you, which yeah. is a huge thing. So and I feel like the, the last thing on this, at least for me, is. I think a really good coach when you know that you have a good one is when they know they don't have to be around there in the future. Like they know that like, you know, they're building you up to then be like your own entity and not having to rely so heavily on them. Like how you did at the beginning right. where you are growing where, yes, I do. I still text Benji every now and again and be like, Hey, help, help. <laughs> right. Do yes. I do that? Yes. Yes. <sighs> but it's, it's not to the sense where everything now that I experience in my life, in my dance career or anything that I always go to them. Right. So I think that's, that's another thing as well is just kind of like, Finding someone that gr- builds you up to to have you progress to mm-hmm. be your own entity and person in this community. Yeah, that I think transitions nicely into uh, tips to making it your career. That's the first one: mm-hmm. having that proper guide or having that mentor with you, so that you know exactly what you're getting into. And talking to not just one person. I in this previous year um, started to make this more and more of a business. And it's, it's been a conversation with so many people. And honestly, to manage this as a business is so complicated. It's a lot. And we're not putting any like sugar on top of this. Like it's, it's not sugar coated at all. It's really a lot and it's very demanding. But as long as you know that, and for me, the biggest thing is making sure that you know what's driving you into this. Like, you don't want to do the the normal nine to five. You want to be able to dance and have fun and express and create and and grow. And that's what this is going to be doing. It's going to be pushing you emotionally, physically, in every single aspect. And I feel like the job of a traveling dance professional, it kind of goes, 
underrated a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like, like it's almost underappreciated at times, but got, but people don't really know what goes into it. And there's a lot, mind you, there's other dance forms. There's other ways of doing this job. It's not just traveling. You can also build community. Right. Which is even harder than traveling, so I've heard. So, um, but what it is, is basically you want to prepare yourself and go slow. Don't just like jump into it, into the deep end. Yeah. Because then you'll shock your system, I swear. <laughs> yeah. And, and I would say the, um, the next tip is just kind of ask what works. Like ask, mm. ask, ask your mentors or ask your friends. Like, I feel like, you know, we were super fortunate to have like super awesome people that shared. And honestly too, is like people just, if you ask nicely and maybe like not when they're like just about to teach a workshop or something or like on the way to a competition, Mm -hmm. but like, if you're just like, maybe just say like, Hey, like when, like when you, like when you have time, I would really love like maybe a phone call or like that's always a really, really yeah. good one where it's like, hey, could I, could I get a phone call? I really I'm, I'm trying to start, you know, teaching and I would really love to know how to contact promoters and know what the right things to say are. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like that's entirely a, an appropriate thing to ask someone. Yeah. And also, too, is I, I would say like kind of like a sub thing is don't take anything personal. Mm -hmm. That's, I think, one of the biggest things in this community that kind of has this blurred line of whenever we're, whenever we're, you know, taking contracts or things like that, or when it's like we say like, hey, like, I can't, or no, and it's like, ah, like, why would you do this to me kind of thing? Or, uh, you know, yeah. on the flip side, like there's been times where like I've been upset about something, but it's really just about budget. You know what I mean? Right. Like it's like they're trying to make the best event that they can and that sort of situation. They, they've Event directors have to manage from anywhere in between 50 to 1,000 people. And in, in my mind, I, I don't know how in the heck that is even possible, mm-hmm. but... If you put that into a little bit of perspective, it's not just about you, you know, and you're trying to make their event as good as it can possibly be just as much as they are. And so don't again. Yeah, exactly. As Christopher said, don't take it personally. If anything happens, um, just know what is right and what is wrong and learn to stand up for yourself as well. Yes. Um, I, I hate to say that I've been taken advantage of a couple of times and in these moments, I... I rationalize it in my head where I'm like, oh, no, it's it's because of this or it's because of that. But when I look at it clearly and from a professional standpoint and I ask my mentors, was this right? Was this okay what they did? Um, Make sure you are asking those kinds of questions so that you can learn from that and then be able to grow and then learn how to respond when those kinds of things happen. They are scary and you want it's it's not like you want to build these bad relationships with people. You just have to learn how to respect yourself as well. Um, 100%. Oh yeah, absolutely. And it is a learning process. You know, you're going to mess up and that's okay. Um, I, I, I know that I've overpriced myself. I know that I've underpriced myself and Mm -hmm. I, I know that I, I, I mean, I've made plenty of mistakes and that's okay. It, this is how you learn. Right. So as long as, as long as you know that and as long as you are prepared um, for that kind of work, it is worth it. Let me tell you guys, it's it really is awesome. worth it. There's nothing, there's really nothing like in the world. You can create, you can share, you can socialize, you can, you can basically make your own hours. If you're doing private lessons and things like that, you can add as many as you want or you can take as, away as many as you want, depending on the kind of work that you need. Yeah. Like... It go the list goes on and on, and you're constantly inspired. You're constantly yeah. looking for new ways to push yourself. You're constantly growing, and that's the biggest one for me. I I I really I need to be in a space where I'm growing every single weekend, and I don't think I've ever had a weekend where I'm like, well, I feel like I just, like I don't think I've ever had that. I've just I've always been like kind of enlightened with every weekend, with meeting new people and learning new things about culture, yeah. traveling, you know. And and I think like 
a, a, another big one that I feel like kind of on the flip side of that, like, like all of these positive things are absolutely 100% true. Also, no, it's a hustle. Mm -hmm. Like it is 100% a hustle. Like you have to, have to, have to market yourself. You have to be out there talking with people and just even saying hello to event directors and that sort of thing. Because the thing is like, if you think about it, right, if you put your, you know, the hat on of an event director, how many faces do they see coming up to them? Right. So it's, 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 it's making sure that you are known and that sort of thing. And, and just know when the kind of trailing it a little bit back to, um, what Nicole was saying about like being taken advantage of is know when you've paid your dues. Like, I feel like that's something that we say a lot mm. in the community, whether you're rising star or in juniors or anything like that. That are like, oh, you know, you're just you're you're still paying your dues, right? Uh, like, know when that time is up, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's like, here's the deal: it's like if you've been paying your dues for like two years and you've been judging for free or for just a pass for like two plus years, you might need to reevaluate some things. Here's the line. <laughs> right like you you might need to reevaluate some things it's like okay um i i've always been in the default of like what am i doing what what am i doing that i'm not being paid staff right what what what's happening is it my accomplishments you know on the competition floor is it my scores you know those are all things that could be factors it could be it could be more often than not, I, I found that I feel like it's... Um, what are they looking for? Yeah. It's like, w what are you bringing to the table other than just that judging? Do you have a routine? Right. Do you have, you know... Are you able to bring in a good good show if you do a competition? Um, are, you, are you able to judge? Are you able to chief judge? Like, what is it that you're capable of bringing to them that they don't have or that they want? Right? Another big thing to kind of piggyback off of that is personality. Yeah. I can't tell you guys enough how many times I, I naturally I'm pretty social. Um, if you have me in the right space, but <laughs> um, there's been there's been countless times where like I'll be talking to somebody mm -hmm. and like I just start a conversation with them because you know like we all have something in common. We all love this dance and all these things, right? So like talking to them for a while, like we're in the elevator just mm -hmm. chatting, and then next week they offer me a contract, and I had no idea that they were even event directors. Right. But they offer a contract because they like your personality and they know that you're going to make their attendees comfortable or just things along that line. If they like the way you act, it's funny, but I've seen event directors hire people not for their dancing skills, but for their people skills. And as weird as that sounds, you would think, oh, like if I'm the best dancer ever, they're going to hire me. It's not always the no. case. No, you can be an amazing dancer, but if you're not nice with people, if you're not good if yeah if you can't be social or like, they won't hire you we, we, like especially in europe if you try and get jobs in europe they want you to social dance and if you're not yeah. social dancing they won't hire you you know so just be pleasant with people and you never know who you're going to talk to either it, it could be an event director for something that's not even west coast swing related and that's happened to me too yeah you know it can be some kind of big event in the middle of like of australia or something and it's like for dance, but it's not even just for West Coast Swing. You never know who you're going to meet. And those are the kind of really exciting things. And yeah, yeah, you know, like that's why I'm like, oh, like, like, who am I going to meet this weekend? Or, you know, there's a lot of opportunity in this world. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. What do we got next? I would love to talk about navigating friendships. Yeah. And uh, friendships that are also your competitors. Because this was the probably the biggest thing for me growing up. For you too, right? I'm I'm curious to hear what you have to say because I I have a gut feeling that um, I didn't experience this as much. Many of you know this, maybe you don't. Uh, I have a twin sister, and competing with my twin sister, not against. We were always competing with each other, and that was always something in our nature that we we had growing up. Not when we were babies, babies. We, we were like this all the time when we were babies, but. 
Right. As we grew up, you know, we were always trained to basically appreciate each other and love each other and work with each other. And we used each other as our motivation, essentially. When we were growing up, we were always, we had this, um, this basically this character instilled in us that we shouldn't look at each other as competitors, but we should look at each other as a motivation. And, you know, we were always doing this. Like if I was doing better and she was doing better then I was doing better. And I think as we grew up into becoming young adults, things started to get serious. Mm-hmm. You know, things started to get even more competitive because the, the, the closer you get to the adult division, I mean, this is how I took it is the more, you are in the adult divisions, that's when it gets more competitive. Six, because there's the more stakes. Are higher too, the yeah. stakes are higher, yeah. yeah. Uh, for the most part, you're trying to get jobs. And if you do well in competition, then that gives you more incentive to be able to have these jobs at hand. And so as we started to get into the adult division, there was a little bit more of that competitive edge. And when we were juniors, mm-hmm. we had what, seventeen? We had a prelims and finals in young adult guys. Yeah. There, there was on that year. I think that there was twenty one junior, junior. Um, it rivaled couples. classic. Like yeah. it, it, it was just as many as classic. I think that year, which was really saying something. Um, so we had a lot on our plate, and you know, I just remember we were trying to be friendly with all the competitors. We, we had a hard time with that very quickly figuring out that. We can't do that until after, you know, and, uh-huh. and not, not, not saying after awards. This is, this is something that has been a struggle and it still is a struggle for me to this day. I love my friends and I think that having these friendships is very, very important. And what's great is that we're actually, as far as I'm concerned, we're the only partner dance community that still has that sense of socialness to it. Yeah. And, I think this is the reason, I mean, this is why I was drawn to West Coast Swing is because I did, we did the jazz competitions together. Yeah. And when we did that, I remember it lasted like a year. We did not last long because. It was not fun. We would go, we would show up, we would do a routine, we would sit on a stage, we would get our award and we would go back home. We wouldn't socialize because everyone was competition. Well, and the biggest thing that I disliked about it that you really take for granted, I feel, in the West Coast Swing community especially like as an audience member or any member of the community is at these jazz competitions, they only clap for their people. Yeah. Like it would, it would be like if you had, you know, the, all of the NorCal peeps never clapped for anyone that danced from SoCal and it was, and like vice versa. Yeah. You just like, don't see that. In the that like that would, that was the vibe at these jazz conventions. Yeah. And and that's something that is that is like you're saying very unique too. It is, so. and it's something that we need to keep. Yeah. So, what we what we were always advocating for is to keep those friends. And like funny story about that is you know as we were in our last maybe like three years of young adult, yeah, we were head to head with another couple. Yeah. And later they became our best friends because we were like, oh, like this is stupid. Like why do we why do we have to act as if we're you know, fighting against each other off the floor. Like, yeah. on the floor, you're my enemy. But off the floor, we're best friends. And as long as we were able to kind of keep that mentality, everything was great. Like, I think, as as Christopher said earlier, you guys don't take it personally. Don't take everything to heart. Yeah. Um, because in the end, use each other as motivation and use each other as kind of that marker as... You're helping each other grow. Cause even then, even with these, with these couples that we were competing with in the mm-hmm. same division, yeah. we would help each other. And like, I remember we would, we would have these mini practices. Like, like we would have a routine. My sister and her partner would have her routine and we would do a tag team, which meant like I would, we would do a run through of our routine and then we would sit down and they would do a run through of their routine and then tap out and then they would do a run through and even though we have the same competition like we still had that friendliness and yeah. that 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 group effort to just be better than how we were yesterday um it's really 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 hard to find that with people though that being said yeah so you you want to make sure that you're never competing against these people you're competing against yourself yep and 
don't take it for granted if you do have a person like that in your life. Yeah, and 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 something that I've I've now sort of grown to um to sort of act, right? Is um like I've I'm now more of the the there's certain people in the green room, right? Like there's certain people in the saying. green room. <laughs> I know what this you is know going. you know exactly where I'm going yeah, with this. Yeah. But basically there's people that are quiet. Like I know for a fact, like Victoria does not want to be talked to. She just wants her headphones and Mm -hmm. in her space. Totally fine. Totally, like, then there's, like, how I feel like, like, maybe PJ and myself. Like, I swear, every time that we competed, I I would give him a hug and say, love you, man. Every single time. Mm -hmm. Every time we were in the back of the green room. And it's just, like, he has that sense of just, like, all right, we're just relaxed. We're just, this is the same, same day. There's Mm -hmm. nothing different. Like that was kind of the vibe that I got, and that's that's sort of something that I've grown to be is like kind of that vibe of just like there's certain people in the green room and and how and how you should like you should know everyone in the green room enough to know that like if someone's not answering you when you say hi, it doesn't mean that they don't like you. It just means that they're really really yes. concentrating and caring about what they're about to do on that floor. Yes. And here's the deal: this isn't just about routines like some people need to get in that headspace for jack and jills and strictly's right right no it's true some people need that yeah like i i know that personally like i've have you know come to have more of like a lax like i still get nervous of course but Mm. like if i start being quiet or in my own head and that sort of thing then i just it just it doesn't do well mentally for me. Right. But if I'm me social too. and just friendly and things are calm, like that's when I feel like I am able to do my best, even though I am like mm-hmm. dropped like three, you know, degrees as far as my temperature and like my hands are freezing and I have to <laughs> nervously pee. It's true. God, it's, you're still like that? Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. Still. But it's Aww. but I effectively like know know your people, uh, yeah. treat them with respect, and also too is Don't like worry about them. is like if you are basing your success around someone else, right? Then you will never get fulfillment. Don't worry about their success or your. You just worry about your own self, right? Like that. That's that's probably the biggest thing. If you're confident in your journey. If you're confident in what you are working on, not where you're at right now, but you're where you're what you're working towards, then keep on that path. But don't think that and like like I I need to take this advice too because it, it's hard when you have people that are either the same age as you or mm. you have people that you know are going after the same things as you. Yes, there are times they're going to be doing better than you. Yep. That's fine. That's their that's their journey. You're you're going to be doing better than them at a time. Or you're going to be doing better than them at other things. But that's what makes you unique. You don't have to be that person that you're, like, inspired by. You know, it's it's your personal journey. Yeah. So if you get if you get last place that weekend, fine. Like, It wasn't work. your weekend. It wasn't your weekend. Yeah, just go back to the studio and, and keep working. You know, it, it, it's going to constantly be changing. So I think that's, the, that's the, probably the biggest thing is... As a junior, we don't really know what our goals are in that moment, but we know why we're dancing. Yeah. You know, we're not just doing it because we need the recognition or we're not just doing it because our parents said so. Like, at least I hope not. You know, like, I hope that we are doing this dance because we love it and right. we want to grow. And as long as that's your main motivation, then... If you don't have that competition sense in your brain that this person is your enemy because I need to beat them, then chances are they're going to lower their guard too and be relaxed with you too. You know? Yeah. That's what happened with me. And it, and it becomes this more friendly, you know, kind of community. And that's something that I feel like um, Rising Star did really well when, like, they mm-hmm. started happening. Because the thing is, too, is, like, we um, we as as juniors, like, we were effectively the rising star division, right? There was no rising star division when we were in juniors. Like, we were it. 
Yeah. Like it was, it was either you compete in classic yeah. or if you've aged out of juniors, like you're it's you, classic or showcase is your only option. Right. So when rising star came on the scene and they, they ended up creating this really, really awesome community feel of being super supportive of each other. And when you have that and, and you have your competitors, like knowing that they have your back is really, really awesome. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, there's there's been times where like I've seen, you know, other competitors sewing in other competitors into their costume. You've seen that? Yeah. That's so cool. Like you like you see people, it's like, oh my gosh, do you have a like how many times? All right, if you've done routines, you know this. How many times you've been like, Hey, does anyone have a shoe brush? <laughs> and and like yes. someone goes and hands them their yours, like it's that sense of just like here. It's not like they're handing you baby powder. Right. You know? <laughs> like they're, they're handing you something that's going to help you succeed. You know, right. that's it's, not it, to be taken lightly. It's, it's that small gesture of like, yeah. or it's like, oh my gosh, when someone's like maybe having a panic attack, panic attack, if you are in the proper headspace to be able to go help them, like, yeah. I don't know. I just always feel We're like I, I, you know, yeah, help people. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, anyways, mm. you get the idea. Yeah, I love that. Uh, that was a that's a really good topic to talk about, actually. Like, um, but I don't think we have too much more time, so I want to make sure that like we move on to yeah. Um, and if you're okay with it, I would like to start talking about this one: what to do now that will benefit you in the future. Okay. Because um, looking back, I know there are things that I wish I could have done when I was younger. Um, so that kind of ties in with another question: is um, what is something that you would have done differently? Um, yeah. Very, I think we were very lucky, though, as we were growing up. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Like, we were super lucky to have teachers that put us in every class. Yeah. And it was, the kind of, it was the kind of thing where it was discipline. You know, we, were, we had such intense teachers. We had Buddy and Lori growing up. And, and then later that evolved to having Buddy, Lori, Lacey, and Benji. Mm-hmm. And just having that, those four in our wheelhouse, that was, that was something that pushed us in motivation, but also pus- pushed us to have that discipline, which is so important to have. If you don't have the discipline to work, then it's really hard to go through this job because it's a lot of work. It's really a lot of work. Yeah. And that was something that they advocated for was having all of their students be well-rounded and I think that's the reason why my parents went with them. Mm-hmm. Um, they put us into the Shimmer Studio when we were three years old. And they they were like, okay, well, these girls are always kind of dancing and moving. And we think that they want to be dancers, so make them good. And so they instantly took the liberty of just being like, okay, they're gonna we're going to put them in Latin and Ballroom, in West Coast Swing, in Solo, t- in Tap, in Jazz, in Ballet, in Hip Hop, in Contemporary. We had to do everything. We were at the studio all day and even when we were tired they'd be like okay get up do it again okay get up do it again and that was when the discipline came in Mm -hmm. and now that i'm older like i hated it as a kid and i wanted to quit and what i would have done differently is i would have kept with my latin and ballroom i would have stayed with that that was the one class i dropped i i I kept dancing everything but the one class that i i didn't want to do anymore was latin and ballroom and i felt i feel now today i wish i would have kept up with it because there's so much that I can do with it that I didn't realize I needed to do now. You know, you, you never know what, where life is going to take you. Just be well-rounded now so that in the future, you're like, okay, but at least, at least I can pull from this or I can pull from that. Or like, oh yeah, I haven't done this in a long time, but I know that I have a background in it at least. So you can brush up on those things. Yeah. Have the knowledge and you'll pretty much kind of just be set. Like... You never know if someone's going to ask you to do a music video and they're like, but can you do, can you do cha-cha? Yeah, I haven't done it in, in a few years, but I can do it. You yeah. know, like you never know. You, you never know what's going to come up in your future and, and being, being well-rounded. And like, that's, that's something that I feel like, like I'm super grateful for. And, and that's like something that happened when we were kids is like, that's, that's that's what helped benefit us, you know? Yeah. And 
And as far as for me, what I would have done differently is actually something not dance related. Really? It, yeah, yeah. Wow. No, no. It's um is work better. Oh, that's great. Um, work more on my mental health. Mm. As a kid. Like there's there's a lot of pressure and there's a lot of things that go into, you know, building up the, you know, courage to go out and, you know, like dance in front of, you know, hundreds and hundreds of people and have all of their eyes on you. Like that can be oh, yeah. like super anxious. And then also like, you know, if you're debuting at the open, which is always super scary is like are people gonna like it did i do the right thing is my routine hard enough like all of these things like where you feel you know the sense and and i i I don't know i I don't feel like those feelings ever go away it's just it's a matter of managing them and i and i feel like if if i were to like go back and, and have done anything differently i would have really tried to work on my mental well-being during those times so that way i when those feelings did come up of if I felt like I was worthless or like my dance didn't do anything for the community or myself, or I, you know, if I wanted to be entertaining and I didn't feel like I was entertaining people or anything along those lines and just, you know, being able to mentally be able to, to take care of that. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's a really good one. Yeah. That's a really, really good one. And it's something that gets overlooked. You know, for sure. I mean, yeah. uh, guys, I would count on the days. I'd be like, okay, we just did our routine. All right. Now that means that we have 365 days left until the next open. I get to be relaxed. I get to joy my entire life. And then, like, as as soon as tomorrow, it's like, oh, God, the open's tomorrow. Like, and I would just go ballistic. I would freak yeah. out. I'd be like, I have a life from from December to, uh, what was it, like, what maybe like, august like august august, august yeah. yeah i have a life between then but then august to november no, no life. life and now that i'm older i know how to balance it better yes. now that i'm older i'm not like okay like i have to like prepare my mind like i still get anxiety around august like it just it's it's ingrained in me at this point but i've relaxed so much more to the point where i'm like i'm going to i'm going to continue to work and i'm going to trust in the process and it, everything will always be figured out. Um, and then constantly working, like, <laughs> sounds weird. I did meditation, like, when Benji was retiring. Mm-hmm. I did 30 minutes in the morning of meditation <laughs> and then 30 minutes at night just to keep myself sane. Just because I, I knew that I needed to prepare for that. So for the entire month leading up to that date when he was going to retire, I was taking care of my mind. I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't necessarily working out or you know, pushing my body, like my body was fine. And I needed to accept that. I needed to be like, okay, this is as good as I'm going to get right now. What's going to get better is if I can take care of my mind, you know? So I I work out as much as I possibly can, get my body as prepared as it possibly can be. And then the month of the big competition, I, I start to relax a little bit more. I'm still taking care of myself. Obviously I'm not eating like chips and stuff like that. Still taking care of myself, but I'm putting more focus on the mentality behind it. Um, and that took me a long time to learn. And that's why I'm really glad you said that, because I wouldn't have brought it up if, if you didn't say that. Um, but it's something that's really, really important, for yeah. sure. Yeah, and that's that's something that I feel like, like you said, a lot of people just, let's just overlook it, of mm-hmm. like, this is something that I feel like is super, super important that that all of us can can continue to do like yeah and on top of that too is um in that mental side of things is like um embrace the emotions that you feel as far as the ups and downs of your dance career it's normal normal. embrace them like it's okay to be angry it is okay to be sad it is okay to feel like you know the world is ending right Mm -hmm. like It is okay to feel all of these things. The biggest thing is just make sure that you are able to not fixate and feel that for a long, 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 long period of time. Yeah. Right? So, like, if I am angry for, like, three months of my dancing, that's going to be bad. But if if I'm, like, if I'm just sitting in it, I'm angry for 
a, a certain period of time and I'm able to fluctuate between all of my different emotions and treat them all, you know, with equal care and respect and mm-hmm. know that they're all a part of me, like that's going to be the best thing that you can do is just like know that what you are feeling is valid and it can be yeah. used to better yourself in in your dance regardless of you know heck, you can use this in life jesus yeah okay. <laughs> it's true <laughs> wise advice from christopher demand no <laughs> so um no but that's that's absolutely 100 percent true and it again it it's something that i constantly need to remind myself um in my daily life but in my dance in particular um because we're so passionate about this sport it's really easy for it to just explode in front of you and you can get really you can very passionately but very angrily just punch holes in the walls because you know it's not working out or because you're frustrated with it and it's so normal i promise you like there's been so many episodes where and it happens more often than i have the good ones sometimes and i I need to fix that but um so many moments where i i question my entire existence (laughs) <laughs> and uh, I question everything about my life when I have a bad dance day or if I had a bad run through of the routine or if I didn't feel like I was teaching as good as I could have been. And it is so, so normal to have these feelings. The good thing is, is one, you're aware. You're yeah. aware that you're having these feelings. That's That's the first step. Two, you can learn from that. So as soon as you are aware of these things, you look at it and you find out, okay, how do I fix it? Not why is this happening to me? You never want to ask the why. You always want to ask the how. Because if you think why, 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 you're never going to be able to get out of that hole. You're going to stay in there for, for the three months or for the, for the year. Yeah. But if you think, okay, this is what's happening. How do I fix it? How do I get out of it? How do, how do I learn how to teach better? Or how can I learn how to spin better? As long as you put the how then your your brain is naturally going to find an answer for that. And so you're going to be looking in your brain and just thinking, okay, like, let me try this method. Let me try that method. Rather than just sitting and being depressed about it, you know, ask yourself the better questions and you'll start to grow past them better. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. More about that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, That's... it's a big one. It's a hard one. It, it's probably something that is an issue for me. Is I mean, I, I did this last year and I'll never do it again. Um, I had an issue in my solo dancing. I couldn't, I had a bad turn day, had a bad day of picking up choreography. My brain was in fog and I just had so many if- issues one after another. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, I, I'm going to put it away for now. And I'm going to come back to it when I'm feeling better. And I never felt better. I never felt better. I went a whole year pretty much pretty much a whole year without working on my solo dancing because I was so, so mad at myself for not having a good day. If I had just taken that little bit of of frustration and asked myself the better question and just been like, okay, how do I push past this? How do I get better? As soon as I did that, I started to have much better days. And that has just started since we've gotten into quarantine. Mm. Like I... If if you guys are following me on Instagram, you see that I'm posting videos. I haven't done that in a year, maybe maybe a year or two years. And that's something that has been a big part of my life now because I was able to push past that. It's completely normal to rethink everything. It's completely normal to be like, oh, I don't know if this is the right career option for me. Yeah. Just push past it. Just if if, if in the moment you feel like this is the reason why I love this. Or like, this is the reason why I want to do this. Or this is the best thing. If you can't picture your life without this, then keep pushing through it. Because that was, that was how it was for me. I, I, I don't picture myself doing anything else in the world. Really. So when I have a bad day, I just remind myself that. And I'm like, honestly, this is all, all I would want to do in my life. This is all I see myself doing. I don't see myself doing anything else. So that's how I know that it's meant for me and that it's something that I need to push past even if I'm having a really bad month, you know? Yeah, so. and, and and I think that, you know, just to sort of finish off at least my thoughts on that is like, I feel like quarantine in specific has really brought up a lot of emotions with a lot of dancers mm-hmm. and just kind of people in general of like questioning their existence in general. Right. And like, I feel like if you just, you know, 
just work on on yourself and 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 really 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 know that everything that you are feeling is valid like i cannot stress that enough like that's yeah. something that has taken me years you know i I've, I've i've said that in like some of my patreon episodes you know um and stuff like that where it's just it's, it's like i wish years and years and years of me realizing that you know what i just what i'm this is this is not abnormal this isn't you know just right. me this is everyone this everyone is, and and what i'm experiencing if someone else isn't experiencing that that doesn't um diminish what i'm feeling mm -hmm. if i'm in the same situation as them like everyone yeah. everyone's different right everyone's different yeah absolutely um i feel like i'm i'm i feel like we're that's pretty much it that's pretty I mean, much it those are those are the biggest things, that, and again, like the, these are the kinds of things like, like when he came over, we were like, okay, like, what, what were you thinking about talking about? Um, he he read the list of questions, and I'm like, honestly, this is this is exactly what we wanted to portray. This is exactly what we wanted to have the conversation being held, um, because these are the biggest things that I would have had questions on as a junior. Yeah. Um. So it's really great to have this kind of format. Like, it's so awesome of you to to create this format because it's something that I would have wanted as a kid growing That's up in the community. So I'm, I'm really, really happy that you're doing this. Um, Thanks. and I also want to, want to, I want to video. I want to, I want to see the videos afterwards too. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 for sure. Um, that's probably the biggest thing too, is like knowing you're not alone. Right. So as if you hear like Chris's yeah. experience and, and his journey and, um, being able to relate to that or kind of base your own experiences off of it and, you know, learn from the mistakes or, or learn from the good things in, in what we've been going through in our lives through this community. Um, if that helps you, then, then that's what this is all about. I'm sure. Right. Yeah. You know, so, um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I I I truly truly hope that um, if you've stuck through this entire time, that uh, you've enjoyed it, and I know that um, there's going to be non juniors hopefully watching this as well, and I hope that you were able to get something out of it um, mm -hmm. for you as well, and also maybe if you know a junior, and uh, maybe you can also be there for them or give them some guidance or something that you learned or as share, well. his, share his episode too <laughs> yeah that would be too shameless plug, shameless plug. <laughs> but um anyways thank you all for stopping by i will put links in the description of where you can find either one of us of you know anything whether it's following us on instagram or our websites so be sure to check that out so that way you can see more of us and all that sort of situation mm -hmm. but honestly just stay awesome and we'll, we'll see you later keep learning <laughs> bye